I've got this thing here to work on today. It's a decade resistor, Gen Red, General Radio. These things are made by IET these days, and they're really expensive to buy brand new. This is a five decade, you can get like six, seven, and all sorts of stuff. Threes and fours, I think, too. This one is basically working, but I want to pull it apart and basically give it a bit of a refurbishment. So it's not really a repair, it's more of a refurb. I know it does basically work. I've demonstrated that in the mailbag already, but let's have a look inside it and see what's actually in there. So you can see this does 10 ohms, 100 ohms, 1k, 10k, 100k in decades. So I can go up to like basic 1 meg. The thing about these, these are precision resistors are in there. They're high precision. I don't remember offhand what they are, I might feel I look it up. Maybe I'll put it on screen or something to say what the precision actually is, the accuracy of this thing. But that's what these are based on, is high accuracy resistors. So, although it's just like, okay, you can make your own decade box using off-the-shelf resistors, you can do that. You can even pick and choose them and bin them to try and get the most accuracy. I've done that myself. But these are like a completely different level. So it looks like to get into it, I've got to take the screws at the back here from these feet. Because there's only studs on the front there, there's no screws. So I'm guessing it's like a post that screws in from the back. I don't know, I haven't had this apart yet, so we'll find out. Okay, yep, that definitely moved. Look at that. Very nice. This is what I'm saying about precision resistors. Not off the shelf things. Wire round. Now I believe these also round in a way so they've got low inductance or something as well. I think that's what they do. I know there are products which do have that, like low inductance wire round resistors, but they basically wind them one way then wind them the other way or something cancels itself out. Beautiful. And there's the switches. So the contact's pure copper and we've got like a multi-blade wiper. See that? So it's got multiple blades in this. So it's got multiple contact points. So this is why these are so expensive because the precision that are built into these things is incredible. The design and it's just really nice. That's why they're expensive. I think these are like silver plated wiring, probably pure copper silver plated wire. That's the sort of thing they use to get the lowest resistance possible. Even the way they wrap them around each one. You know, the care goes into making these things, it's incredible. Lovely devices. From the outside it looks a bit crappy, but the inside, look at it, just incredible. Don't make things like this anymore. So I've just hooked up my keysight meter here to this. Let's get a look at the actual decades. Now I've shown this already mail bag, I did find there was some which are not quite working right. I was going to find which one it is so we can test, confirm, fix it in the end. So, that was looking okay. I'm looking for any like jittery numbers where it gets there but then it jumps around or something. Pretty sure this was one of the ones I was playing up for. You can see what I mean by position. <laughs> there we go, there's one jumping around. This one, number seven. So jump around there. So number seven is that one right there. So this one here is giving us trouble. For whatever reason, we have to look at that one. So it's the 7K is the one that's giving trouble there. Nine seems to be a bit, yeah. Nine and ten also playing up a bit from memory, so yep, there we are. So maybe it's just this one, maybe. Yeah. I think it's mostly this one. So that's why we need to verify after we've done the cleaning. Now, normally I'd say just leave these things alone, but because it is playing up, you know, it's, it's, I don't know what kind of grease is on these. It's obviously got some kind of lubricant on there. I don't know what that is. And so I don't actually know if it's a good thing to clean it off or not, but it's playing up. So, and it is looking pretty dirty. Like if I just get this one here, which I know is a problem. Look at that, it's like green. So there's obviously some oxidization in there, sort of greenish. 
So it's some oxidization there off the copper, see that? So I think I do need to basically go around, clean the screws off of them, and maybe polish them up a little bit, and then reapply something on there. I do have a little bit of dielectric grease. I'm not sure if it's the best stuff to use. Now we'll clean that off and see where it wears. Yeah. So, yeah. So seven, so it's 10, 9, 8, 7, that's the one that's playing up the most. Right, so I'm going to clean all this off. I mean, see it's green, right? So it's obviously the oxidization from these things. I mean, the grease is green, but I doubt it. I'm going to clean all these off and then put something on there. Right, so I wipe the grease off. Now you can see that there is definitely oxidization going on here. So what I'm going to do is very carefully take that off. Now what I'm going to use for this is a fiberglass pen, all right? Because it's relatively gentle. It's going to take a little while, and I'm basically just going to brush each contact with the fiberglass pen just to try and remove the oxidation that's there. See, it doesn't take much at all, it's already basically gone, all right? Because the grease does protect it quite a bit. So, I'm going to go around and do all of these contacts with this, and then I'll figure out what kind of grease I'm going to put onto it. So, you can see the difference here between ones I've polished and ones I haven't yet. The only bit that really actually matters is right where the wiper touches, right, and those lines are. Really, that's the only bit that matters, but I'm doing the whole top anyway. So I've done these three now, you can see the difference between these ones and those. Also using this dielectric grease here. Um, hopefully it's the right stuff. I'm basically polishing them up and then putting the grease on before any oxidization can happen to try and make sure they stay good. The only thing is really is the wipers. I would like to get to the bottom of the wipers as well, I'm not quite sure if I need to take those apart or not. I don't really want to go there. As they're rubbing across all of these, it might be okay anyway because it's got the wear effect. So I'm not really too worried about them. Um, but anyway, I'll get these other ones done and then we'll retest it. This is basically what I'm doing with the grease. I'm just basically getting a little bit of it, putting a little dob on the center. Just a little one, each one. Try not to over grease it. Go back to that one. Alright, a little dob on each one. And then just rubbing it around just so it's got a coating on the top doesn't need to be a really thick coating just need the coating and this one here because I've got some on my finger I'm just going to use that All right. done next one All right, let's try this again and see what we get Well, the resistance is lower. That was had a one in front of it before, didn't it? Yeah, I think it has actually dropped slightly. That's good. Right, let's see if everything's behaving correctly. That one. <laughs> That'd make more sense, wouldn't it? The electrical mechanisms probably need a bit of lubricating as well. These ones especially feel a bit gummy. Right, seven. Maybe that 7 was playing up before, that's looking good, rocking around, 8, 9, good, 10 was playing up as well, yep that's looking good too, and as this gets used it should actually get better and better anyway because part of the issue with the contacts on these, because it is based on a bit of wear, so as that wiper runs across it will actually clean the contacts a bit anyway when I first got this thing I did the test on it I had several decades which weren't actually working like individual ones weren't working so when I operated them a lot they got better and better normal usage will clean itself anyway it's one of the advantages of this type of mechanism but I wanted to get rid of all the oxidization and get it all nice so it's as good as possible to start with basically what now is making sure that everything's still working correctly and I've made anything worse
Cool, it's looking good. So that's definitely nice. Now the mechanism side of it, I have to see what I can do about that. Because I do feel a bit gummy, but that's like in that shaft. And I think the only way to do that is to really take the whole thing apart. I'm not sure I really want to do that. Which one feels worse? Or did the one which feels worse? Probably this one. This one feels worse. I think if I remove the grub screws from here, that shaft will pull out. Let's try that. Right, let's see if this actually works. Yes, it does. So, yeah, there's old dirty grease in there, so let's clean this up. Show back in, try and get some more of that out. Still, you've got spots where it's binding. Yeah, even that, like, even though I've got it not done up, it's still dragging. I might just try and give us a polish with something slightly abrasive just to try and take any high spots down. I don't think it's just grease. Okay, just looking closely down inside this bore here, it looks like it might be cracked. So that's probably why it's dragging a little bit because it's rubbing because of the crack. Slightly out of alignment. Can you see down there? This little line just there. So I think it might actually have a crack in it. Not completely sure, but I think it might be cracked. So if we all put it back on again, just to get the front panel clean, yeah. So put that shaft back in again, it doesn't feel a lot better. So next thing I'll do is put a little bit of machine oil on the actual physical mechanism. Just to try and help this to slide a little bit better. That should hopefully work its way in there. And we'll see. May get better, may not. But I mean, it does feel slightly better. But anyway, I think it's a good maintenance thing to do. Lubricate all. Yeah. Still doesn't feel as nice as that one. But hopefully, it'll get better over time as that machine oil gets into that mechanism as well. Do the same to the rest of them. I'm not going to bore you with the rest of that. There you go, it's all cleaned up, looking much nicer now. Probably use a little bit more, but it's not too bad. Looking way nicer. These will feel much better now. Massive difference just putting it all apart and lubricating everything. It all feels like new. They all feel the same now, so it's brilliant. So yeah, happy with that. And as you saw, it's also pretty accurate. But also, the kids like me has got some error, you know, if you count two or there, it's normal. That's that refurbished. This can go into my collection of bits and pieces I need to use occasionally. Other videos to watch down below there if you're interested in repairs and refurbishments. Subscribe over here, again, if you're interested in repairs and refurbishments. And there's a Patreon support link over there if you want to help me to buy things like this or more complicated things to do repair videos about. Catch you later.